Hi guys, and welcome to In the Kitchen with Janine. And I just want to say thank everybody and anybody who watched yesterday's video because that has never happened to me in all my 50 more years of cooking. But what a bless and funny because I had to laugh at myself. What could you do? It happens. Sauce 101 should be the basic thing you learn when you cook. And I hadn't done a roux or a milk-based flour butter sauce in so long that I don't know what happened. Maybe the onion, something went wrong and two of them, not one, but two. And I was trying to follow someone else's recipe and I never do well with that. So finally I did it myself and it did turn out delicious. So if you see and want, if you see the finished product and you're a tuna casserole lover, please take a look at my recipe and you'll see that it was really tasty and it turned out wonderful. And the sauce was much better because I made I wound up learning how to make my very own mushroom cream sauce, cream of mushroom sauce. So that was pretty awesome. So, you know, something good is some, uh, something out of nothing, which is my favorite thing to always tell you. Now, today I just got back from shopping. And I've said this on my channel lots of times and all these little tips and tricks. But I don't think I ever gave it the attention it needs. And I was watching somebody's film last night, I think. The People's Channel. Yeah, hi, The People's Channel. I'm a new subscriber. Check them out. They were doing a, a live last night. And she was saying something to the fact that she didn't have green onions for her recipe. Or maybe it was another channel. It doesn't matter. The fact is that I have a way where you can always have green onions because I didn't always have them for certain recipes. And they're very... Um, popular and um dominant in the finishing and inclusion of chinese food fried rice dishes lo mains and all of that stuff so i can't tell you how many times i had to run out for it myself and i said you know i'm tired of this i've not made recipes that require them because i don't want to run out from anyways i learned this on youtube from another content creator years ago that they regenerate and they regrow in their own little water jar. Here I have too much in it. But anyways, I, let me take this out to show you all purposes and how it's done. You get your, bu your bunch of green onions from the supermarket, wherever you get them, however many bunches you want. Now you can see mine are cleaned. I cut the top off fresh and I have some aside here because now I'm not going to waste them. That's going to be the next recipe I'm going to talk about coming up. But I cut them for that reason. I always like to trim them because when you trim them, it's like a, a house plant. It's the freshness that where it wants to draw the water up the roots, and that's why it keeps growing. So now you cut them, you fill a jar or a glass. Doesn't have to be a jar, could be a glass. I have too much in here, I think. Let me show you the right measurement, and you will be amazed. You'll have these. I've had them on my windowsill once for two months. And then I feel like, you know, I want to change and get a fresh batch because they're not expensive. It's one of the few things that's still relatively cheap to buy and abundant. So get yourself a bunch and put them in water, a little bit less. You don't want to go all the way up. You want to kind of stay from the white down. That's a good measurement, from the white part down. And then you'll see the, the roots will start to curl. Shoots will come out of the tops. And when they're very thin like that, I consider them chives. So you can chop them and you could freeze them. But you will have these ever growing. Sometimes they get up. I've done shorts. Look at my shorts. I said, oh, it's happening again. I made a whole video on it because it's hilarious and it's wild that they do this. But it's beautiful at the same time. And when they roll around and roll around, you could trim the roots. Always keep trimming the tops tops as you need them the only thing is you got to keep a little eye on them because i like to and it's suggested to change the water every three days that's what keeps them fresh and another thing to do to maintain they don't see much here now but sometimes you'll see see that little bit there you'll see a dry piece sometimes they come up here pull them off all the way down i've done that before they went into the water i don't have a good one to show you because you see how pristine they all are but normally they'll have a See like this one here, it's growing. If I were to pull that, I could pull that all the way down to the root. And that's basically what you got to do when they grow. I'll do this one to show you. It's fresh and it's new and you don't have to, but you'll see the dry ones and you just pull it right down to the root. See, you go like that. And that basically reveals the fresher piece. You could leave that right now. And then you put them in. That's what helps them regenerate. And then you just put them on the windowsill or in the corner like I'm going to do. And they'll keep growing and growing and growing. And you could keep cutting them. And like I said, I like to freshen them up and get a new batch every six weeks or so. But who, who wouldn't love to have green onions for six weeks in your house fresh all the time? Do fried rice, do chicken, lots of recipes to use them. So that's not a waste. And when you get them home and cut them, I just happen to be here. Let me give you an example to show you. 
This was a tiny shoot from the top. Now this is so small, I minced that up. I would consider that chives. So always keep the tops when you want chives. And the exciting part is I'm not going to tell you. I'll tell you at the end. The other thing I want to show you quickly, because today is a little bit of herb day. Just want to do it while I have them home from the supermarket fresh. The other tip I want to give you is my parsley. Here it is right from Publix, a beautiful bunch. Here's what I do to preserve this and make it last at least three weeks or more. I cut off all the stems. See? I throw that out. If you have recipes that require them, I would dice up the stems, put them in a little container, tub away with water, and freeze them. That's an idea for that. I don't use the stems a lot. So what I do in any event is I take this whole bunch like this, and I'll cut it roughly so that it can fit into my container that I've showed you guys before. I line a container with a wet, moistened napkin. Now I'm going to put this all in a water bowl. I have in the sink a bowl filled with water. I'm going to wash it really well. Okay, let's get our parsley washed. Swish it around. Like I said, I don't need the big stems. So sometimes you'll be shuffling them through the water and you'll come up with more big ones. Just take them off however you want. No biggie, no fussiness there. Let me just clean off my board a second. Okay, let me run some fresh water. Okay, and then all you have to do is you take your... I bought two because I'm going to do the same with cilantro. It doesn't matter. Cilantro, parsley, dill, whatever herb you have, I would say this works for. And then you just shake off the excess. Okay. You wash them in the water. You turn them around. And then you fill your jar. And you can squeeze them in there. Okay. Shake off as much excess as you can because you don't want them saturated. You're creating your own little humidor, humidifier for a veggie, so to speak. This is what keeps them fresh. That moistened napkin at the bottom is going to keep the moisture on it. It's going to get cold. Any excess water you kept on the parsley is going to drain down to that napkin. But there you have it. It's cleaned. It's refrigerator ready. Now I'm ready to cook with it. And I have this beautiful, I got to get the lid. Like I said, I'm going to do two because I have my other bunch here. I bought a bunch of cilantro because I'm going to be making my own herb blend for Spanish beans, the sofrito. It's by no means authentic, but I'm excited because I found small batches of culantro, which is a main ingredient in that dish. Okay. See little things. Don't stress over that. And there you go. See, and you cover it with this. And now there's your little moist and humid or whatever you want to call it. I don't, know the, I don't know the technical name for it, but I know it works. I know I've been doing it for years. And now when I cook, I just go over to my fridge, pull it out. I'll grab a little, little bunch, so to speak, like that, however much I'm going to need for a pasta or a recipe. I take that and I mince it fresh and I put the jar back in. It lasts weeks, minimum three weeks. There just goes your onions you have. You have your parsley, your cilantro, whatever herbs. I'm going to do that. And you're good to go. Now, the exciting thing is in the next video, if you're going to stay tuned and please remember, hit that subscribe button. And to the new people that have just subscribed to me, thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate that. It helps me. I'm going to be making something I've been intrigued with. These are hemp hearts. These are hemp seeds. It's a seed. And I saw this in a plant-based. I'm always snooping and dabbling because I'm always curious about that. I can never go fully vegan or fully plant-based. But like I said in a past video, I like to pick and poke and snip things I like. I saw them make a ranch dressing that's plant-based that looked delicious. Who, would want, who wouldn't want a healthier salad dressing, vegetable dip, whatever have you? And I bought these. And to tell you honestly... They taste delicious right out of the bag. I had said this in a video before. They taste like crushed almonds and walnuts together. Delicious in smoothies, uh, sprinkled on ice cream, other things. Now, I watch many videos, and I'm going to be doing that in the next one. You're going to see me transform these seeds, and no mayonnaise, no cream, nothing, no milk, and I'm going to make a ranch dressing. So I hope you enjoyed this video filled with veggie uh, herb tips. I hope you look forward to my upcoming hemp seed ranch dressing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.